This week, I wanted to go over my Steam Deck and trying to install Windows on it, seeing what the performance difference is and seeing if it is something that is worthwhile to do. So I have two different Steam Decks. I have a Steam Deck LCD 512 gig with the etched glass. I got this refurbished you know, over a year ago and it's been fantastic. But when they came out with the OLED and then there was the first drop of OLEDs on the refurbished um, page for Steam, I ended up picking up a Steam Deck 1 terabyte OLED and that one is fantastic. I really like it. But consequently, I don't really use the, uh, the 512 gig LCD as much. So trying to find a use case for it, I was like, man, if I can install Windows on this thing, then I can use something like Xbox Game Pass and play those games on it. And I just kind of wanted to go through the process and see what kind of performance hit I'm taking by installing Windows on a Steam Deck. So this video is going to be broken up into like two parts. The first part is going to be comparing what type of Windows I would install on my Steam Deck. And then the second part is going to be comparing the best version of Windows you can install on your Steam Deck with SteamOS and seeing how it compares. Where I get my Windows installs from is massgrave.dev and here it's free downloads for the, uh, the files to get uh, Windows up and running on your operating system. That being said, it's not an approved Windows site for downloading the, uh, the ISO files and getting everything going. So use at your own risk. This is what I use. But right here, we can end up seeing the Windows 11, Windows 11 right here, and then I ended up using this download link. And then for the Windows 10 version that I think is probably the best version to install on a Steam Deck, that's gonna be an enterprise version of Windows. So this is pretty hard to get on any like normal means. It's pretty hard for just a regular consumer to buy this, but you can download it off of uh, massgrave.dev and uh, and then you can just install it onto a uh, flash drive. So this is the, uh, the ISO that I ended up using for this. So first off in the benchmarks, we're going to compare the Windows 10 LTSC um, IoT version, which is the enterprise version of Windows 10, to the Windows 11 version that would just be, this is like the same version you could get if you just bought a Windows 11 license from Microsoft and installed it on your Steam Deck. So let's get into the benchmarks and see how these two compare. First up, we have Red Dead Redemption 2. I ended up having to run this game at 720p because I was just having compatibility issues at 800p but we use the lowest preset. It's the same between these versions of Windows and the testing that I did with SteamOS. Um, no upscaling, uncapped. And as you can see, we have max FPS, average FPS, and then minimum. These are the values that we get through the built-in benchmark. And the reason why I had to do this is because when I started doing the testing with SteamOS, I don't know how to capture things like 1% and 0.1% lows in the same way that I would on Windows. You know, on Windows, you just use MSI Afterburner and you'd use the Reva Tuner statistics and you'd be able to run a benchmark that could capture all that data for you. But on SteamOS, I don't know how to do that. I know it has to be possible. So if anybody knows what software or hardware I need to be able to capture that stuff, please comment down below because I'd love to do a more thorough testing with 1% and 0.1% lows in the future. But for now, this is what we have. Um, it does show a lot higher uh, max FPS on the Steam Deck LCD with Windows. I would just ignore the max FPS. I think the most important metrics here are going to be the average FPS and then the minimum FPS because that's showing us overall what kind of performance we're going to get and then also what was the lowest FPS that ended up dropping during the benchmark pass, which I also think is pretty important. It's not as important as 1% and 0.1% lows, but it is what it is. It's what we've got. So overall, I'd say that the Windows 10 is better in this game, even though it does have a lower max. Um, they're pretty close in terms of the average. And then when it comes to the lowest FPS, it's 25% higher FPS than the Windows 11 version of the Steam Deck LCD. In GTA 5 Advanced, we're running at 800p minimum preset no upscaling uncapped and here basically exactly the same performance nothing really to write home about no real difference between running the enterprise version of windows 10 which the whole point of the enterprise version of windows 10 is it just like has no bloat it's just basically built to just run windows with nothing going on in the background 
and in this game doesn't really seem like it affects the performance compared to just a base windows 11 home install forza horizon 5 again same performance across both of them um, in games where we're not seeing any additional ram usage that's going to be where there's no real difference because one of the benefits of running windows 10 enterprise edition is you usually end up freeing up some additional ram just because there's fewer things going on in the background but with forza 5 doesn't really seem like that is going to impact the performance cyberpunk 2077 using the built-in benchmark um, we're using the steam deck preset here so that automatically does fsr balanced which ends up rendering it like a little bit above 50 percent of 800p uncapped bigger numbers better so in here we see very similar performance between the windows 10 and windows 11 versions and overall it doesn't really make any difference which one you run Finally, we have Black Myth Wukong. Again, this is running uh, FSR balanced, and the performance is basically the same. So nothing really right home about here. So let's just take a look at the uh, benchmark summary. And then we have some other things that I want to take a look at comparing Windows 11 and Windows 10. So in the benchmark summary, we can see that the performance is very similar. We have like slightly better minimum FPS with the Windows 10 version and then slightly better max with the Windows 11. Again, I don't think max is as important as the min, but average FPS is identical between these two across those five games using the built-in benchmarks. But the most interesting thing to me was how the different operating system affected battery life and the amount of storage space you had after the install. So let's take a look at the overall battery life you could get from Windows 10 versus Windows 11. So in the battery benchmark, I basically just charged the Steam X to 100% and then use them till they got to 50% of the battery capacity. I was using the same settings that I did on my Black Myth Wukong benchmark, so that's 800p low settings, FSR balanced, but I put a 30 FPS cap on this one, and I had it running the benchmark in a loop. And I feel like this is a pretty realistic use case for me, because I will definitely run a more demanding game until I get to about half of my Steam Deck's battery life, and then I'll switch to something that's less demanding, just so I can get more hours of gaming if I'm like traveling. So on this, going from 100% to 50% of the battery's capacity, the Steam Deck with Windows 10 went 73 minutes, and the Steam Deck running Windows 11 went 67 minutes. So that's like a 9% increase in battery life just using Windows 10 Enterprise version. And I think the reason behind that, again, is you just have fewer things going on in the background, those things that add up over the course of, you know, an hour, and then it ends up causing you to have lower battery life just because more things are going on. During the testing, these things both had 50% brightness and 50% volume. So it's about as apples as apples as you can get when comparing these two. And I repeated this test twice, and both times I ended up seeing the Steam Deck with Windows 10 performing better. Finally, I wanted to get into the storage difference. So this also surprised me. After you do a clean install of the Windows 10 Enterprise version and the Windows 11 Home version, it ends up being like a nine gigabyte difference. You end up having like nine additional gigabytes on the Windows Enterprise version. And this is even after I went through the Windows 11 home version and like deleted a lot of the bloat. So before I did any of the testing, I made sure that I made the Windows 11 version as lean as it could be for the benchmarks to make it as fair as possible. And even with that, you still end up having just like more stuff in the background. So I don't know if that's just a product of Windows 11 being just a little bit larger of a operating system. But on something like a 512 gigabyte storage, like nine gigabytes is actually a fair amount of your overall storage capacity. So getting that back by just using something like Windows 10 to me is a benefit. So overall, I think I like the Windows 10 enterprise version better over the Windows Home. And that is going to be the version that I compare to the Steam Deck LCD running Steam OS. So let's get into those benchmarks. First off, we have Red Dead Redemption 2. Again, we're running at 720p because we were having issues with 800p. And uh, we're in Vulcan running the lowest preset, no upscaling, uncapped. And here we can see that the, uh, let's just go with the comparison between the LCD versions first. So those are the bottom two results. So Windows 10 on the bottom, we get 42 average. And then with SteamOS on the LCD model, we get 45. So good little increase there but the uh the minimum fps is about the same and overall between these two games 
pretty uh, pretty similar on both handhelds. Uh, when we take a look at the Steam Deck OLED running SteamOS, you can see there's a, a little bit of a bump, especially when you look at the max FPS. But like we talked about earlier, I don't think max FPS matters as much as the average and minimum. But overall, I think these results are pretty comparable between these three configurations. Next up, we have GTA Enhanced. This is an 800p minimum preset, no upscaling, uncapped. And here we see pretty similar performance between, between all the devices. We end up seeing about the same average FPS on all three of them. Um, the one thing to note is that on the Steam Deck LCD running Windows 10, we do have a lower minimum FPS than the other ones. But apart from that, average FPS, pretty comparable amongst these three. In Forza Horizon 5, 800p low preset, no upscaling uncapped. We can see that the Windows 10 LCD actually has the highest minimum FPS, which is kind of cool to see. Again, it'd be better if we had the 1%, 0.1% lows. Again, I don't know how to capture that data. If you do know how to, please comment down below if there's some sort of software or hardware I need to get so I can make these benchmarks better in the future. But for now, we can see identical average FPS performance between both LCD versions running SteamOS and then Windows 10. And Windows 10 gets a little bit of a bump in the minimum. Overall, the Steam Deck OLED still has the highest average FPS, but all of these are playable results on Forza Horizon 5. Next up is Cyberpunk 2077 running at 800p using the Steam Deck preset. This puts FSR balanced on by default and when we compare the two LCD versions, uh, you can see that you get a good bump in performance going from Windows 10 to SteamOS on the LCD, both in the minimum and the average FPS. For some reason on the Steam Deck OLED, this one ends up having a lower minimum and not really that great of a uh, of an average either. I think part of the reason with this is because it's uncapped sometimes to get to that like 72 FPS max, it can cause like a rubber banding effect where then it ends up having like a stutter which causes a 30 FPS minimum. But when we're just looking at the two LCD versions, we can see that there is a viable reason to have SteamOS over Windows 10 in Cyberpunk 2077. Finally, we have Black Myth Wukong, and this shows scaling that I would have expected from all the games. So you can see basically like a steady increase going from the LCD with Windows 10 on the bottom to the LCD with SteamOS to the OLED with SteamOS. You can just see like a good stepwise fashion as the performance gets better in the average and minimum FPS. Again, this is what I would have thought we would have seen in all of the games, but this also is one of the most demanding games that we've tested. So this one again, 800p low preset, and we're running FSR balanced uncapped. So we can see that when we just compared the two LCD versions, there's pretty comparable. Um, you got a little bit better in the minimum and a little bit better in the average, but overall very comparable results in Black Myth Wukong. So let's get into the benchmark summary and see how these games compare. When we average out all the games, we end up seeing that the difference between Windows 10 and SteamOS on the Steam Deck LCD is actually not that big. We end up seeing one FPS in the minimums and then one FPS in the average. Uh, when we take a look at the OLED, we see a little bit of a bump in the average FPS compared to the LCD model. But the real thing that is impressive about the Steam Deck OLED is going to be the screen and then the overall efficiency of that chip. And we'll see that in the battery life benchmark. So when we take a look at the battery life benchmark, let's start with the LCD models first. So we have Windows 10 versus SteamOS, and we can see that we're going from 73 to 85 minutes, which is a little bit over 16% increase in battery life going from Windows 10 to SteamOS. And if we think back to the Windows 11 comparison, that was 67 minutes. So if you go from 67 minutes to 85 minutes, that's actually like almost 27% increase in battery life just going from Windows 11 on the Steam Deck LCD to SteamOS on the Steam Deck LCD. So if you only have one Steam Deck, I don't think you should put Windows on it. I think SteamOS is way more efficient. It gets way more out of a Steam Deck. And again, the way we ran these benchmarks was charged all the devices to 100% and then use them on the Black Myth Wukong benchmark running in a loop at 800p, low settings, FSR balanced with a 30 FPS cap, and it was at 50% brightness and 50% volume. So they just ran, and yeah, you can just see way better results running SteamOS 
on a Steam Deck LCD. So that would be my recommendation. But if you're a first time buyer for a Steam Deck, this is where you really see the reason why people say you should try to get the Steam Deck OLED. Because just look at the battery efficiency. This thing ends up having an OLED screen, which looks great. It's at 90 Hertz. It's more power efficient. It has a die shrink on the APU, so they went from seven to six nanometers, which provides increased efficiency. And then they bumped up the battery to 50 watt hours. So those things combined mean that this thing can go from 100 to 50% capacity, and it takes over two hours for it to do that, running a game like Black Myth Wukong. So the power efficiency on the Steam Deck OLED is just unmatched and is the main reason to go for that device over the Steam Deck LCD. Because as we saw in the benchmark summary, the performance is pretty similar between them, but the Steam Deck OLED just blows everything out of the water when it comes to power efficiency. Finally, I wanna take a look at the storage capacity. And as we can see, the Steam Deck LCD running Windows 10 versus Steam OS, you end up having 10 additional gigabytes of storage when you run SteamOS. And that's just because SteamOS is a lighter operating system. It doesn't take up as much space. And when we think back to the Windows 11 results, you actually have 19 gigabytes more space running SteamOS on an LCD Steam Deck than you do running Windows 11. So if you do want to put Windows on a Steam Deck, my recommendation is going to be using Windows 10 using the enterprise version that I showed you guys at the beginning of the video. But the best version of a Steam Deck is a Steam Deck that's running SteamOS. So if you only have one Steam Deck, I don't think you should put Windows on it. I don't think you should dual boot it. I think you just run SteamOS, or if you happen to have two Steam Decks, you can put Windows on one of them. But I wouldn't, I wouldn't do any of the other things. I've dual booted in the past. I've done a lot of different things. And I end up spending more time tinkering trying to fix stuff than I do playing games. And that's not what my goal is. My goal is to enjoy my Steam Deck and to play games on it. The comparison to the Steam Deck OLED in this one really isn't viable because the Steam Deck OLED I have is the one terabyte with the etched glass screen. So if you, that, that is interesting to you at all, you can see that you have 938 gigabytes of storage to utilize when running a Steam Deck OLED with Steam OS. As for my final thoughts, I really enjoyed this testing. I have been using Windows 10 on my Steam Deck LCD ever since I got my Steam Deck OLED. So it's been about six months now and I've had a great experience with it, but I was never totally sure if I was doing the right thing. Like I was just using the Windows 10 Enterprise version because I assumed it would be better than Windows 11, but I didn't actually have any testing done. I didn't actually know if it was doing anything that was beneficial. And now after this, I can see that I'm getting a storage benefit, a battery benefit, and then the same performance. So for me, I'm just gonna continue running Windows 10 on my Steam Deck LCD. And the main reason for that is it just gives me the ability to play games on Xbox Game Pass. So I've been having a lot of fun with that. Um, if you are in the market to get a Steam Deck, I will always recommend getting the refurbished Steam Decks. They come with the same one year warranty. Both of my Steam Decks were refurbished ones. They came looking brand new. They're fantastic. Um, you get the exact same warranty coverage you would if you bought a brand new Steam Deck. And if you can pull it off, the OLED version of the Steam Deck is phenomenal. The battery life increase makes it so much more versatile for being a handheld and using it, you know, outside on the go and when traveling. So if you can pull it off, I would get that. If not, there's a bunch of like good battery banks out there, things that can help increase the battery life of a Steam Deck LCD. And next week I will be doing a video of the accessories that I use for my Steam Deck. So I've bought a lot of stuff and if I could go back in time, I'm going to show you guys the list of stuff I would have bought so that I wasn't buying things multiple times so that it would have just been a one and done. These are the things that you should buy if you're a new Steam Deck owner that will provide you the greatest benefit for your Steam Deck. But that's all I have for this video. I hope you guys enjoyed it and I will see you next week.